Hey everyone, this is Market Peak with Seth and Matt, and today is Friday, February 12th, and it has been a crazy week, as I'm sure you guys know. Uh, we're going to have a lot to cover today. The main thing we're going to be talking about is the whole cannabis crackdown, what's been going on with that, the crash. Uh, Matt's going to have his three charts, of course. Uh, we're going to you know, go into my portfolio, which took a bit of a beating this week. Uh, and gotta say it every show, we're not financial advisors. It's not financial advice. We just, you know, give you our opinion on some of the stuff that we like. Definitely consult your professional. So what's up, Matt? All good out there? What's up, Seth? All good. How uh, you been? I've been okay, man. It's, 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 yeah. it's been a rough week. It's been a really rough yeah. week for uh yeah. for my little portfolio so uh, those of you you know you can see on the screen here i actually sent matt a screenshot of uh, my portfolio when i was when i was officially up like 1200 percent. i think that was what wednesday yeah. and yeah. um uh it's down to 800 percent. so i you know it was it was a pretty it was a pretty rough one that's okay so to give you guys a skinny on what I did, I sold space. They're supposed to, you guys heard me talking about it. I'm not the only one. Everyone's been talking about this flight, you know, test flight that was supposed to happen. It got delayed. Same thing happened way back in December. Uh, in fact, actually, let me go to space here. Of course, there's an ad. I'm just going to have to get the account. All right. So as you can see, if we go back three months and you can see December here. So this is, they're supposed to have their little flight right here and it got postponed and then there you go so it was slow like it dipped and went up and then it dipped a little bit more and then a little bit more and that's what i'm expecting to happen this time so as you can see today uh it dipped to the actually well, actually we'll go the five day it went up and it dipped down and went up and it dipped down i feel like it's going to dip a little bit more that's when they're going to buy back in and that's when they're going to release the other test flight and that's when it's going to go back up so definitely a good, you know, a good uh, play to make, I would say. Have you have you done anything with space at all, Matt? No, um, I still follow it. Sure. Um, and um, if it does cool off a little bit more, I might take interest, yeah. I might take positions. To I'll let you know when I'm going to jump in because I've been, you know, I've been riding this one up and down for, for quite some time. I mean, I remember back when it was like 18 bucks. It wasn't that long ago. Okay, so Sundial. So as you can see right here, Sundial had a really nice pop. I got about a buck fifty or so, and I got my first ever call. Called Matt. It's like I did it. Here we go. I'd always been the one to just mainly focus on investing and buying stock. Um, so anyway, I got the call, two fifty call. Gave myself a month for it to to come through, uh, and sure enough, within a couple days, it was up like three sixty something like that. So, and I ended up calling Matt and I was like, what should I do? And he's like, sell it and think about doing, if you really think it's going to go up, think about investing in more, you know, get some more shares if you want or something like that, but take the profit, sell it. It's like, all right, that's good advice. So the next morning, this was after hours we had this. The next morning I get up early. I see that it's doing well. We had to go to the doctors uh, for my little girl. So we left 9.30, I was in the car. Didn't see what was going on. By the time I looked at the phone, it had dropped to like negative 10%. The contract was just barely, I mean, it was, it was, I could have maybe sold it. Um, but unfortunately, you know, I decided to hang on. And so going back to Robin Hood here, as you can see, I got a call for $2 for two fifty. dollars um, That is one uh, that I originally had. Ended up getting another one for two fifty. I paid 49 cents for each of these. Not that bad. Uh, one expires in a couple weeks. You can see the other expires not until March. I also got a ten dollar call for TRXC. Uh, I got you know twenty five contracts with that, and the reason why is because it's just been going up. It's been getting nothing but positive uh, reviews. I've been talking about this show for a while. It's a medical device company. Uh, if it keeps doing what it is doing, even if it does half of what it's been doing, this shouldn't be a problem within a couple weeks. Uh, and you can also see here, this is a little embarrassing, but let's face it, I got a sundial call for $7 that expires in two weeks. So probably not going to happen. That's all right. I didn't spend, you know, you know, it wasn't terrible. Um, but uh, that's that's pretty much where we are, dude. So I got a lot into sundial. Not a lot, like three, 4000 bucks. And as you can see, I own sundial as well. So there we go. But yeah, I took a big hit. If you see my week... It was pretty good, and then it just like completely collapsed. So, 
Yeah, I noticed that the implied volatility on that sprite, sp uh, excuse me, strike price yes. and expiration date um, spiked pretty dramatically uh, a few days ago. Sure. And I'm sure now is uh, is getting crushed. And what you actually so. said, which is really, you're like, I mean, where's the volatility? Like 100, 200? And I was like, actually, 400 is like, sell it. And he explained to me that the higher that volatility is, the more you can get for that 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 contract because it has a better chance of going up and down. And he was absolutely right. I could have still sold it for a profit today because that number is so high. So I didn't want to take a four hundred dollar profit. I'd rather just wait and see what happens than, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. But yeah, it's a good rule of thumb to kind of expect any option whose implied volatility has spiked that dramatically to kind of cool down. Yep. But you never know. <laughs> Look at GameStop. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Um, I still think Sundial has uh, room to run. Um, but will IV be that high again uh, in the near future? Hopefully not. Hopefully settled. They, yeah. They're completely debt free. If anything, if, if, yeah, if anything, what you can do is just wait for IV on that same strike price to go down a little bit, or you can buy in the money options, which tend to have um, more manageable sure. uh, implied volatility numbers. And, you know, you, you might, you might just still have that exposure, but, We'll see. Um, you know, yeah, it'll be a safer trade. It's uh, you know, right now it's it's done all right. Um, so we're after market. It's two dollars. It actually finished at like two oh seven. Um, it made a mad dash from like one ninety eight, one ninety nine to two oh seven within the last fifteen minutes. And obviously that was to break that two dollar mark. So a lot of people got in, and hopefully it just it carries through. But it didn't. It only went down like minus two percent in the post market. So, all right. So, Mr. Matt, do you have any trade updates since we last spoke on Tuesday? Yeah. So, what did I say was going to happen on Tuesday? I said the VIX was going to go down. It has. Big time. Um, I believe we closed below that 20 level, critical level right there. I'll talk about that later when I go over some charts. We're actually and right at that... 20. Like, right at okay. 20. 20.0. 20 okay. okay. And I thought that... Uh, Simon Property Group would test that uh, breakdown candle high. It did, that 110 area. Um, it backed off from that, um, but it's still holding uh, support. And it looks like we might have a little bit more room to run next week. Sure. Nice. Weeks are hot. So. Yeah, I mean, you've been calling the VIX pretty much across the board. I know the only prediction I made was I expected the VIX to kind of just do exactly what it's been doing. But here on Friday – um it yeah it finally took that little dip and what you've been saying let me refresh this and what you've been saying is that if it gets down to 17 you expect it to keep going down uh to possibly no, no, no. What, what i've been saying is if it gets down to below 20 and we start seeing close below 20 then it'll collapse down to the 17 18 area. sure so all right i mean it's dude i mean it's just it's hovering right around 20 that's for sure all right, so we're going to go ahead and, and, you know, we're going to talk about, I guess, the big event that happened this week, which is the entire just cannabis collapse. I mean, it's just it's pretty crazy uh, when you think about how the entire sector collapsed all at once. Um, it makes you feel as if maybe the entire sector was a pump and dump. It was just very, very odd. Well, this is this has happened before with cannabis. This happens with. Um, I remember, yeah, last year. All, yep, yep. All sectors, yeah, with a lot of like small caps, uh, you know, emerging companies in them. Um, you know, you have people with a lot of leverage come in, pump up the stock price, and then dump it, which they um, have enough back holders. Sure, sure. So, cannabis is no different. Uh, we went through the same kind of cycle, bump and dump cycle, a couple of years ago, and you know, just repeating itself. Um, there is more in the news now. Uh, to drive positive sentiment. It looks like Democrats are poised to um, legalize it. We'll see where that goes after these stimulus talks. But, you know, legalization is in the news right now. That's going to help prices and that's going to, um, you know, create more institutional interest in some of these larger companies, which many of whom have partnerships with major uh, beverage distributors. Um, so there's a lot to look forward to in the space. Yeah, we took correction. 
looks like maybe 20, 25% across the board, particularly among these highly traded uh, cannabis stocks. But uh, same again, thing with the EFT. You know, I'm surprised to get back. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens um, with, with everything. Uh, if it does rebound, how much it rebounds, but I'd like to think that there is enough of what's going on with legalization. In fact, it was today Mississippi had uh, announced that you know they got something on the table for medicinal marijuana at the last, like at the stroke of midnight, right? And it was just announced today. <laughs> so like these little things, you know, are are happening slowly but surely. And I think you know any little hint of like legislation and obviously all the stocks went up because of the election and a lot of states decided to just legalize it for recreation and that boosted everything so little by little i think i hope it rebounds just hit the 250 mark hit the 250 mark sundial and i'll be okay i mean if not i'll live with it you know i got you know other other investments that's for sure so there's a good case for Sundial um, at 250. Um, the technical setup is there. Yeah, we just took a big hit, but they're debt At the free. very least, you'll get a dead cat bounce. Yeah, I can't at the very least, stress that. For another round. Sure, I hope so. I mean, it's cheap enough. That's for sure. We'll we'll see. I mean, it's got to bounce at least a little bit, and I feel a little bit. You know, it could be 25 percent based on where it was. We'll see. I have, you know, I got a month and I got two weeks to get there. So, but I think, you know, hopefully everything that happened, you know, is is just going to bounce back a little bit because there are a lot of people that are invested in this this sector, especially now. Um, but luckily, well, here's here's an interesting point, and I think you have to think about this when, um, you know, deciding whether or not to sell this latest dip. I think. A lot of bag holders who got caught with their pants down the last time the cannabis sector crashed are now taking profit, are now back to where they were, right? Sure. Um, during the last crash and are now selling as a part of just like, you know, a cautious, um, you know, risk strategy. Yeah. So once some of that selling is over with, I think you'll have a lot of, you know, new hands come in and take advantage of some of these prices and, you know, generally a positive, um, you know, uh, uh, macro background. Sure. We'll see. I mean, there's a lot of people who's like, oh, Sundial, you know, they're, te- you know, their their stock is worth much more than the company and yada, yada, yada. I mean, yeah. you know, there yeah, are yeah. plenty of stocks that fall into that category, but I've said it before, they're debt-free. They have $600 million in the bank. You know, you can do a lot with that. And I feel like with all the attention they've been getting, their best bet would either become acquired with people have been talking about uh, or for them to purchase another company that'll get them some storefront because they have products. They have like four products or five products already with different names and, you know, different missions, so to speak. So, all right. Well, I guess with that, we can go ahead and move on to everyone's favorite segment, three charts with Matt. Of course. For sure. Everyone's favorite. That's right. So go ahead and uh, sure. start with the VIX. Uh, let me get, I'll just go ahead and get the month out. Um, you uh, spoke about it really, really briefly already. Um, but, you know, feel feel free to expand on it just a little bit if you'd like. Yeah, so um, we touched that critical 20 level. Let's see if we start closing, um, you know, hourly candles below it. If we do and... Uh, we can't recover. I'd expect, you know, an unwind down to that 17, 18 uh, level support. Whereupon I'd expect a bounce. Uh, next week is a shortened trading week. Uh, we open up on Tuesday. So that's four days for the VIX to uh, collapse down to that 17, 18 area. Um, can it happen? Sure. Um, do I think options expiration will play a role in the direction of the VIX next week? Absolutely. Um, so op- options expiration is on Friday, the 19th. Um, you normally have, um, you know, the beginnings of some sort of trend, like short-term trend reversal right around that time. So we'll see what happens. I do think the market grinds higher next week, which also tends to happen uh, during shortened trading weeks. The market just kind of like floats higher. 
Um, maybe some people take a break from trading, um, take a holiday and, you know, less people at the desk means less chance to sell. Um, and you just generally, again, see like a slow trend higher. Sure. So we'll see what happens with the VIX. Um, you know, pay attention to it. Um, let's move on to the next chart. All right. USO. All right. United States oil fund, uh, up about 37% over the past three months. You can go to three month chart. And I think you have a possibility of a breakout. I think it might over the next uh, half year, try and retest that breakdown candle high at 87 level. And if it does, um, I think you'll have, you know, more opportunity to run higher there. Energy stocks have been beaten down over the past year. They're showing, showing signs of life. A lot of these big oil companies uh, coming back to life. A lot of small oil companies too. Fang um, might have fang, Diamondback with Fang. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Is, is a big one. They're the ones that, that are a little bit more stable. Yeah. And then Oxy, yeah. of course. Yeah. Which people Love think Austin. they, you know, a lot of people thought they weren't going to make it. They had a huge thing going on, but yeah, they've all been doing pretty well. I bought you a yeah. at once, and I bought it right before it did a reverse freaking split, dude. It was awful. Of course, of course. And I mean, look, if you believe in the recovery store, if you think these vaccines will work and will return to business as usual um, over the next few months, I think oil energy would be a good play. Um, you'll see more of a demand. You've had a lot of U.S. producers in particular shut down, close the doors over the past year True. due to lack of demand. So that constrains supply, which pushes up prices as we enter the warmer months. You can expect the cyclicality of oil to come into play and boost prices higher. Agreed. I mean, honestly, once the airlines, once the boats, the cruises, they use a lot of oil. So, I mean, it's, it's you know. It's industrial activity. Yeah, for once sure. Once that picks up. For sure. You know, all right. Well, then let's move on to the SPY. SPY. So only thing I have to say about this is it looks like we're headed to 400. It looks like the S&P wants to crack that big round number of 4K. Um, and I think, you know, listen, I know we only have four trading days next week, but we could do it next week. And I what would that mean, do you think? like Gravitating if, towards that big round number. I mean, if you hit, what would that yeah, mean? if you were to hit 400. So, so conventional wisdom says you might get a bit of a pullback away from that big even number. But in my experience, you tend to get a little bit of an overshoot. Um, so that's what I would anticipate. Okay. Um, can you trade against that big round number of 400 on SPY? Absolutely. Um, would it be a bad trade? No. Um, would I do it? Not necessarily. I might I might wait until things cool down if it gets that high. Sure. Um, see the lay of the land, watch the dust kind of, dust kind of settle um, before I you know try and short it. But we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see how much I longer we get, we get there. all this can go. You know, I mean, today it's been a pretty flat week. Like all of the you're looking half percent up or down, pretty much. You know, for for the for most of the week. So. Hopefully next week, maybe we can have a little bit of a breakout. Otherwise, you know, it's probably just going to be a pullback, I, I feel, a little bit. We shall I see. I think if we get a pullback, it'll be sharp yet short. Yep. And it'll be viable. Okay. All right. So uh, for our uh, our predictions, like, so you so Monday, what do you think? Uh, you think the VIX is going to, you know, close up or close down? I think think we might get a bit of a bounce god i just Maybe can't get bounce. below 20 man for like i not for like six it's, months it's it, it is like that 20 is like meh. it's like somebody put like a steel a steel plate there or something uh all right uh, yeah yeah if it get does get below 20 and we start closing um hourly or four hour candles um and we start you know that becomes a line of resistance then yeah, I think we go down to seventeen, eighteen, sure. that area. Sure. Um, in the matter of you know a couple of days. I hear you. Well, I guess we'll see. I mean, as far as uh, yeah. Yeah, I expect, I mean, as far as like I said, it was been pretty flat for the week. Not a whole lot happened, so I expect us to. I honestly, I think Monday, especially after a long weekend, people have you know a little bit more time to think about maybe what moves they want to make and how they feel. And Valentine's Day, you know, Monday, everyone's gonna 
We'll yeah. uh, we'll see what happens. But I expect I expect a Monday to open open up a little bit. I really do. It's starting to feel a lot like a year ago when the market was just slowly floating higher, slowly levitating higher. Yeah. And then suddenly we had that big crash. Ah, dude, it's coming. It's... The difference, yeah, you say that, but the difference is the VIX was a lot lower this time last year. The VIX is still high. Shoot, true. Uh, dealers are still selling plenty of options. Uh, the, the premium is still there. Money's still, still being pumped, but it's not going to last longer. I mean, the whole thing with... Uh, COVID, I mean, it's 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 really dwindling here in the United States. Yeah. So, you know, once once that that happens, it's going to be really interesting. You know, once the economy open opens back up and everything. So, all right. Well, hopefully, sundial. You know, you don't have to go up that much. You really don't. It's like you know, forty five cents or so. Uh, I have SHMP. I have that on my Fidelity account. Can't forget about that. Yeah, I mean, I I bought it. It's been it's just been you know I'll pull it up. It's been just super flat. SHMP. Uh, I didn't get a. I got like three thousand dollars worth or something. In fact, in fact, it's down a little bit from when I got it, which is fine. I got more. I I bought the dip just a little bit. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it it you know actually wow yeah it was like sixty cents. Um, but it, it really, where I got it, like around 80 once or something, it's been pretty flat. So hopefully it makes a move. But honestly, that's a long play. I'm not worried about that moving at all. They've got a lot of good stuff going on. So it, it's just going to sit there. That's for sure. And Blue Sphere, I finally was able to buy Blue Sphere. The money cleared in my TD Ameritrade account because I couldn't get Infidelity. So I've got like, I don't know, 40,000 shares of Blue Sphere. It's not a lot. Um, you know, and there's another stock that I purchased as well. But I'm not going to talk about that because we're going to save it for a future uh, stock, uh, I guess, uh, stock pick. And with that, so I guess that's pretty much it. Tomorrow uh, we'll be coming out with another episode. Matt has a little stock pick for us we're going to go over. We're going to talk about the stuff that we like uh, coming up for Tuesday. We call it our Monday prep, but this week's going to be Tuesday. And, uh, you know, maybe some stuff to stay away from. So that's what's up. Rock on. Talk to you guys soon. Boom. Boom.